Okay, it's nine o'clock. Uh, this is a regular session. We're meeting in the Hood County uh, Justice Center in the uh, Central Jury Room. And uh, would y'all all please stand? The meeting's called to order. Stand for the invocation. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for what you do for us each day. We thank you for this great country. Be with each one of us. Give us the knowledge and the know-how to do the county business. I ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Would you join me, please, as we pledge the flag of our great country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Join me to pledge the Texas. Our the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you all very much. Uh, Bob, we have special presentations today. Yes, Judge, commissioners, uh, we have one individual who's celebrating his fifth year with the county and he works in environmental health. His name is Sam Hall. Who's the picture taker? Oh, there, there she is. <laughs> Congratulations, Sam. Thank you, Sam. All right, is there any citizen that wishes to make any comments about the uh, any agenda item? If so, uh, the sheriff has a form for you to fill out. Anyone? Just raise your hand and the sheriff will be really glad to come give you one. All right. Uh, does any commissioner wish to uh, pull anything off of the consent agenda? Hearing none, Judge, I make a motion to approve consent agenda A through H. Second. All right, I have a motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington to approve the consent agenda A through H. Is there any further discussion? Then uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Item number, uh, hold on. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the budget and uh, now uh, subdivision roads and plats. Judge Cockrum, commissioners, uh, we ask that you hold a public hearing to establish a speed limit of 30 miles per hour in Humphreys Court. It's located in precinct number two. The roadway is, there wasn't any, any uh, driveways or, or things that would, that would go from the common 30 mile per hour that we usually set on the county roadway. It's straight, it's about 2,400 feet in length. I did talk to Commissioner, uh, of precinct two, uh, he agrees with this, and we, we recommend that we do establish a speed limit on Humphreys Court at 30 miles per hour. Okay, a public hearing is now open for the discussion of establishing a speed limit of 30 miles an, an hour on Humphreys Court. Uh, does anyone wish to comment on uh, establishing a speed limit at 30 miles an hour? Well, here in nine, the public hearing is now closed. I'll entertain a motion to uh, change the speed limit to 30 miles an hour. So moved. I have, have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington, uh, to establish the speed limit on Humphreys Road at 30 miles an hour. Uh, is there any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh, opposed? Motion carried. Judge, our next one is, is in the development. Uh, we also. I see just hold a public hearing for this replat. They're replatting lots 3R through 4R, 9R through 13R, 17R through 26R, 44R through 52R, 65R through 68R, and 74R through 78R. And what that amounts to is they're doing some lot line adjustments. And, and in some places they've, they've removed a lot. So in all it's about 34 lot, well it is 34 lots and they've taken four lots completely out of it. 
the dark areas that you see above is, is the lots they, that, they, uh, that involves this plat. The far left, they end up removing one lot out of that, and in the far right, they took two lots out, and in the very inside, they removed one lot. This, it's located in Precinct 3 uh, within the Water Quality District. It does meet our, our regulations for, for replatting, and uh, development does make a recommendation to approve this replat. Okay, a public hearing is now open to consider and take appropriate action on the replat of the lots in uh, aforementioned in Fountain Village. Does anyone wish to make any comments on this? Hearing none, the uh, public hearing is now closed. I'll entertain a motion to approve this replatting. So move. So I have a motion made by Commissioner Hetherington is seconded by Commissioner Barry. Is there any further discussion on this item? Then all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Thank you very much. Budget and finance, consider line out adjustments. Uh, there are several line item adjustments that are requested of you this morning. I have prepared uh, a summary of those and uh, presented those to you for your review uh, late last week. Uh, the first one is county court at law wanting to move uh, $700 from contract interpreter into dues and subscriptions. And then county court at law wanting to move $200 from books and publications into uh, dues and subscriptions. Fire Marshal uh, asking to move $4,950 from the uh, Volunteer Fire Department subsidy over into vehicle maintenance. Uh, the county Judge asking to move $1,000 out of attorney fees um, into mental commitment hearings. County Judge asking to move $500 from contract interpreter to the mental commitment hearings and also $500 from burial expense into mental commitment hearings. AgriLife Extension uh, asking to move $300 from telecommunications into fuel and oil. AgriLife Extension asking to move $100 from telecommunications into education, travel, and training. Purchasing asking to move $60 from supplies to telecommunications. For the citizen convenience station, um, there's going to be a shortfall that appears in contract waste disposal. So the request um, is to put 8,000 uh, into that uh, by moving 700 from bulk waste revenue, uh, 1,200 from other fees, 500 from telecommunications. And uh, to make that happen, we would have to uh, have approved a transfer from the general fund of $5,600. In the uh, Justice Center, uh, there was storm damage to the electronics of the doors, and um, Jackie tells me we need $12,245 uh, to cover that. Uh, some of that will be subject to insurance recovery from TAC. But uh, I believe the terms of that is that the county has to pay for that damage up front and then file the insurance recovery uh, through the risk pool. A county attorney is asking to move $400 from telecommunications into fuel and oil and $500 from contract services into books, publications, and subscriptions. Uh, we have reviewed those. They do appear to be appropriate and I would ask for your approval to post those budget amendments to the general ledger. All right. <clears throat> Item 13, Stan, is the Justice Center, and that's the one we're going to file insurance on, Jackie, after we get it fixed. Yes, sir. Yes, that's correct. And it's, oh. So, so we're going to pay for it. Uh, and then on the Citizens Collection Station, just for just for comment, that's a good thing that we're having to take money. That means more people are using that citizen's collection station. So that's coming out of the general fund to pay the, the dumping. Is that, and that's what you're getting that money, correct? That's correct. And the, <coughs> the citizen fee revenues have actually already exceeded what we anticipated for the annual budget. Motion to approve the budget line amendments. Second. 
All right, a motion made by Commissioner Berry, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington to approve the budget line items. Uh, is there any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Thank you very much, Stan. Considered payment of bills, Stan? Uh, Judge, if it's all right, um, in between these two, I'd like to ask if Nelda would come up. She has uh, something to address the court. It has to do uh, with expenditures. I'd like to get that uh, done before we address the total of the expenditures. Nelda. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Um, I have four items that have been requested by different departments that will exceed their 1 12th. Um, two are from the Sheriff's Office. One is for a four draw drawer file cabinet. Uh, what's their 1 12th balance is only 218.93. This purchase is 227.15. They do have enough regular budget to cover it. Um, the second one is a 24, pyramid 24 hour task chair. Um, they are ordering three of these. Um, looks like they do not, the total price is $1,374.24. Each chair is $458.08. Um, if we approve the previous drawer file, they will have totally, they've totally exceeded their 112th. Um, but they do have regular budget that could be used. What was the first one that you did? It's a drawer file cabinet. Okay. So that item five on uh, considering take appropriate action of uh, purchase uniforms were expended. It, it, you're not talking about that right now. That's a separate. Okay. Okay. And then I have two more. I have one from Kathy Davis, our treasurer. She is requesting six boxes of custom printed window security envelopes. Um, she, uh, she has moved money into that account to accommodate this, but it is over her 112th. And the last one is for the county judge for a handheld voice recorder to record the meetings. And it's not to exceed $200 and it um, it will be over his 112. All of them have money in their budget? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. I have a motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Simpson uh, to approve those line items. And we'll consider that in, in with the general budget. Go ahead, Stan. Uh, Judge and Commissioners, the total of the expenditures that are scheduled for your consideration come up to $400,722.62. Uh, there are attorney fees and court reporters and visiting judges to be paid $33,899.61. Uh, bio landscape and maintenance for contract mowing of the right of way, $20,110.58 to uh, CIMA Companies Incorporated, $16,802.50. That was for the uh, email conversion to Gmail. To ComData for fuel card purchases, $37,534.62. To Ergon Asphalt and Emulsion, $28,482.24 for road ops materials and also for road ops materials, $26,779.31 to Northeastern Asphalt. To the Solid Waste Fund, $10,500 uh, to cover uh, cash shortfalls. That's a budgeted transfer already. To Somerville County, $28,614 for out of county inmates. I have provided a payment warrant for each item on the list of accounts payable. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have, but I would ask your approval to pay those bills. Move we ratify paying the bills. I have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson. Do I have a second? Commissioner Hethington made it. I mean, Hethington, I'm sorry. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson. Okay. Uh, then uh, any further discussion on the bills? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carried. And uh, the motion made by Commissioner Barry and seconded by Commissioner Hetherington to uh, consider the uh, line item uh, adjustments of 112. Any further discussion on that? Then all in favor? Uh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action to consect a second hearing on the proposed budget and tax rate. Judge and commissioners, the uh, I believe the tax laws require that there be um, another hearing today, and um, the schedule is for the budget to be considered for approval on September 11th. Um, so I have a uh, presentation to make of some technical revisions. If you'd like to uh, enter the public hearing, uh, I can wait and do this afterwards or do it before. No, let's do it not right now. The public hearing is now open to consider uh, on for the proposed budget and tax uh, rate for uh, the 2012-2013 year. Uh, does anyone wish to make any comments? The only comment I'd make, Judge, is since the last time we had the hearing that Stan's gone back and adjusted some of the items that we've talked about in previous courts and open court and uh, budget hearing and equaled out travel and uh, supplies for like departments such as four commissioners, four constables, four JPs. So that uh, that's in your budget that he handed out this morning. So that's to be noted. There's there's no change in the tax rate or anything like that, right? No. no. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else? Then the public hearing is closed. Um, is, uh, I, I'll entertain a motion, I guess, to approve this final hearing or second hearing on this. Judge, I would like to say that um, The changes that I have proposed to you are what I would consider to be technical revisions. Uh, some of these have to do with individuals who have terminated service with Hood County and there have been new hires. And so what we thought um, in July when you presented your budget, uh, we thought those people would be on board. Uh, they were at the time, they're no longer here. Uh, one thing I can say with fair degree of certainty is that between now and September 30th, we will have other personnel changes. Uh, the personnel office uh, typically has a list of those that they bring to court every two weeks. So uh, I don't have any illusion that this is the final uh, number as far as compensation is concerned, but I would like to say that the, the aim of the budget is not to determine what an individual is going to be compensated. Uh, that's the job of the personnel action form and the department heads working with the court and the personnel office. Um, I understand that once the budget is set, it can be a limiting factor on compensation. Uh, but the purpose in the budget uh, is to make sure that there is adequate budget to cover what is anticipated as the compensation for each individual. And uh, I have gone through and, and made an effort to recalculate each line item. Um, I'll be happy to make any changes to that that you wish. Um, but I believe this is a budget we can live with. Um, certainly, if you find any errors or problems with it, please let me know. I'll be glad to uh, work with you to make any re revisions that are necessary. Okay, thank you very much, Stan. Does anybody have any comments about the budget? Any further comments? Any commissioner? Okay. I presume we don't have to have a motion or anything. It's just for the hearing, right? Correct. Okay. Then uh, the next item is consider, uh, discuss, and take appropriate action regarding the final payment for J.C. Stoddard on the courthouse work. 
Judge and Commissioners, um, the only bills that I know of that are remaining to be paid on the courthouse uh, are three as far as the county's obligations are concerned. One, you've already approved and the check has been written to train and um, that check is being held in the treasurer's office pending receipt of the final invoice from train. And uh, we're still communicating with them. Um, the judge has uh, collected evidence that everything we need to deliver to them has been delivered uh, by certified mail with return receipt. So uh, we're still waiting on Mr. Hastings. Uh, this morning, I opened up an email from HDR uh, Architects and um, they have two final bills, one for $9,611.72 and one for $14,417.58. Did you say two final bills? Uh, there's, there's one that they say they billed earlier that uh, we failed to pay. The 9611 is November 1st through December 30th is what it says on the email. I haven't had a chance to look back and, and review that, but it's... 14, four, the 14417 says uh, for finalization of uh, the documentation to THC. It's a final closeout. And then the, the other invoice that is still outstanding is from J.C. Stoddard, and that's in the amount of $358,401.06. And that leaves a balance of $116,285.01 in the contract contingency that was not spent. I did make sure with Mr. Stoddard that um, we wouldn't see another bill for that $116,000. And he assured me that uh, the 358401 is the final, final bill and there won't be any other change orders. Uh, that would be the end of it. But as I understand it, um, this bill would have to be paid before the Texas Historical Commission would allow us to have a uh, rededication ceremony and before they would pay their final bill to the county. Well, we're going, if they want to come, they can come. I mean, we're going ahead with it, so <laughs> I think it's pretty much scheduled. Good. So. J.C. Stoddard said that he would like to be there, though. So, all right. Uh, the judge, I mean, Judge, did you talk to Mr. Stoddard about some of the items that we pointed out last yes, week? Yes, yes. And uh, they, uh, the, about the, the gap in the doors, and mm -hmm. there's still some of the finish on the doors is not, not good, and uh, the window's leaking and things like that. Yes, we have. And he's supposed to be taking care of that with what, the MMI or is that? MMI. MMI, yeah. All right, well, I'll enter. Uh, we know, though, before we do it, do we know if, with Hald and Talley's final bill, he, if he's turned everything into the state for the closeout for them to be satisfied with the pictures and, and all the reports? I understand that's what that 14000 was for, right, Stan? Yes, it is. And my understanding is that Jeff Cummings is the one who is compiling that book to be reported to the Texas Historical Commission. So we get, we're going to get a bill from Architects too, or is it going to go through HDR? That's a, I don't know that. I've never had a bill from Architects. I think that's all done through HDR, yes, sir. As bad as I hate to pay the bill before everything's finished down there, we've got to get our money back from the state. And as soon as we send this in, the quicker they can send it back. So. so my motion would be that we pay the bills on all these bills that you brought forward contingent on the fact that the treasurer holds them like we're doing trains until you verify that the state's satisfied to release the remaining funds back to the, to the county. And that would be in the form of a motion, Judge. Okay, you've heard the motion made by Commissioner Barry to have a second. I'll second that. Seconded by Commissioner Hetherington. Any further discussion on the motion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action regarding parks and wildlife. Uh, Judge and Commissioners, this is something that uh, I think we have an option to do one way or another. Uh, one of our JP offices 
uh, does the accounting for parks and wildlife fees a little differently than the other JP offices. Um, what happens is these fees are collected and then a certain amount is due to be paid to the individual ranger for those parks and wildlife fees. And so what we have is a receipt of money that actually belongs to someone else. We're holding it in custody for them until such time that we're ordered to pay it to them. Uh, one of the JP offices uh, breaks those out and shows parks and wildlife fees collected and that's a revenue. And then as an expenditure, they show parks and wildlife fees remitted to the park rangers. Uh, we're at a point now to where the volume in that office has exceeded the budget of the parks and wildlife fee expenditures. It's really not a county expenditure. Um, auditors and accountants, we like to see both sides of a transaction. We really don't like to see numbers collapsed in against each other where you have a debit and a credit going to a single account and you end up with a zero balance but no activity on the books. So theoretically it's, it's better if we show parks and wildlife receipt and then uh, expenditures. That's kind of a pass through though, right? Even though it exceeds the budget, it's not coming out of the coffers of the county. That's, that's true. And the other consideration on the flip side of that is it's not the county's money. We hold it in trust for someone else. And so the argument about showing both sides of the transaction is a little weak. Um, it's a standard accounting treatment that we, we, we do like to see the transactions in broad form on the books instead of collapsed. Uh, but in the other offices, uh, they do deposit those fees to the expenditure account and then they write the money out of the expenditure account. It very naturally reconciles itself back to zero. It's not the county money. So uh, if we were going to carry on and do it the way we have been showing it broken out into components, I would need a budget amendment or your authority to increase the budget on both sides of that. Uh, or if, if you'd prefer that we just collapse them in on the expenditure account um, and not show the increased revenues and the increased expenditures, it's... Um, what do you recommend? What do you recommend? Uh, I put you on the spot, did I? <laughs> as, as an auditor, I do always like to see both sides of the transaction. Um, but I, I can't argue too much that it's, that it's wrong to collapse them uh, because, you know, we could transfer that to a balance sheet account and just say, okay, when we receive it, it's a due to the park ranger. Uh, the difficulty comes in... And I, I don't want to complain too much about the net data system, but uh, Go ahead. With, the, with the authority levels that are allowed with net data, if we're going to let the, the uh, JP office write the checks or order the checks to be written through a requisition to pay the rangers, they have access only to their accounts. And if I pull that money out and put it on the balance sheet, then the JP don't have don't have the authority to pull that money out of that liability account on the balance sheet. And that's just a, that's just a technical restriction of access in the net data system. Uh, to make it very easy, I would say the easiest thing would be to deposit those fees into the expenditure account within the JP department and allow them to write expenditure requisitions to pay for it. That would be the that would be the simplest solution right there. The, the rest of it, you kind of have to go around the block two or three times to get it done. And it, it makes the auditors happier, but um, I don't know if it's worth all that much extra effort. So in the budget, though, I looked, I'm just not looking at what you handed out. In the budget, you have a line item for parks and wildlife for reimbursement in every department, I mean, every JP's office. Yes, typically we would, typically we would do that. It's just that in this... Uh, JP office, the volume of transactions this year uh, has so much outpaced the budget that if we were to follow that, I would need to add revenues to the budget and add expenditures to that JP's office, which is proper. How does it outpace the budget if they're taking fees in and it's a pass-through? 
Well, he's what he's saying. It's it's over the budget on both sides. Yeah. Uh, Is this know, the thwarting fee that we do in the JP offices? I mean. Yeah, that one. Um, they're they're offset within the department. Um, with the JPs, the the revenue is actually in the general fund lines and not within their departments. There's no Parks and Wildlife revenue to offset in the JP office. Because that's over on the general fund side. Correct. I'll entertain a motion to uh, do what Stan said. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Well, you good mixed up yet. Uh, Would you restate that motion, Judge? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. Stan? <laughs> Go ahead, Stan. What? No, that's fine. That's what I just want to clarify. I'll make the motion and allow the auditor to work this detail out with the JP. All right. Second. We have a motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sheriff, consider and take appropriate action to accept donation of $3,000 from the city of Brazos Bend to Hood County uh, for the rescue boat. Judge, commissioners, um, last few years, the three years, they've don't, the city of Brazos Bend has donated me $3,000 towards a project of someday getting a rescue boat. Um, when I came into office, I put together a dive team, trained them, um, get, got them some gear, but I have not been able to afford a boat. So this is to ask for the commissioner's court to accept the donation so I can deposit it and uh, hopefully be able to buy a boat one of these days. So move. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Barry and seconded by Commissioner Simpson to accept a $3,000 donation from Brazos Bend to the Sheriff's Department for the Rescue Boat Fund. Uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Thank you. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the approval of the Pecan Valley Transportation Contract. This contract, Judge and Commissioners, um, last year we had a partial contract and what this does is to pay mileage for all the mental transports that we do to Wichita Falls, to Terrell, to Austin, to wherever, to one of the many state mental facilities around the state. So um, we were able to get a contract put together and, and it ran, we ran it through Commissioner's Court and it was a partial contract last year. This will be a full 12 month contract so I ask that you um, approve this so that we can pay back some money with the uh, mileage charges. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing. It's a kind of a one of those unfunded mandates that is getting funded. <laughs> so partially. <laughs> Doesn't pay for people, but it pays for the mileage. Right. Move it. Approved. All right. Okay, I have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner uh, Hetherington to approve the uh, 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 Pecan uh, Valley Transportation Contract. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the request from the city of Toler for a patrol vehicle. Would you like for the chief of the Toler to come forward and talk? <laughs> Commissioners, we have the chief of Toler Police Department here today with us. Uh, he has asked me to request through you to uh, get one of my old patrol cars. Come on up. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. <coughs> Him and one of his staff is here today and um, to back this and support this. And um, we did this a couple of years ago and they help us a lot. Chief Cox has a narcotics dog and has done a lot for us um, with working that dog wherever we need around the county. And so he's helped us out immensely. and. And I sure would appreciate it if we could help him out by um, letting them have one of these old cars that I'm taking out of service. So move. Second. Second with the he needs to work with purging agent to get her, purging agent to get that off the rolls and get it handled that way. We need a uh, yeah. Coming back next, I think the next, Lynn, Lynn McDonald said yesterday they'll be ready to go to Renee Bates by probably the 11th court. So just work through the purchasing agent for whichever car it is. We need to get that title changed pretty quick too on that, so. 
or get it off. nails or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, who, who seconded that? I did. I have a mission, motion made by Commissioner Hetherington, seconded by Commissioner Barry to uh, to give the, let the Sheriff Department have, uh, Toller have one of the Sheriff Department's patrol vehicles. Uh, any further discussion? The car is going out of date. The cars were taken out of service. Yeah, car, yeah one that's going out of service. Anybody uh, have any further comments? And all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carried. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Purchasing. Consider and take appropriate action to approve request for district clerk for four license fees, Adobe 10, Fund 55. Good morning again. Um, I was contacted by the district clerk. From what I understand, there are some mandates that they can no longer fax things to the state once it goes through their court stuff. It has to be received electronically. So she needs the Adobe license in order to do PDFs to uh, be able to submit that electronically to the state. So she's asking for this money. It's a total of a $1,141.88 to come out of Fund 55. Okay. I thought Jackie was going to say something. He got up. So, <laughs> motion to approve. I heard a motion made by Commissioner Barry. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Hetherington to allow uh, the purchase of uh, four licenses for Adobe 10 from Fund 55 in the amount of $1,141.88. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action to approve requests from Sheriff's offices to use Fund 10 569 330 budget line to, for the destruction of evidence not to exceed $999.99. Uh, what this is, is this is a, out of a supply line. It's over the $250 limit that was earlier established this summer. Um, they need to get this evidence <coughs> destroyed and it's like a dollar per pound. So they weren't really sure how uh -huh. much it was going to cost. That's why the uh, RFE call, uh, <coughs> is noted as $999. So they would like to be able to use their supply account. As of the day I checked it, they did have enough money in there. So move. Second. I have a motion made by Commissioner Hetherington, seconded by Commissioner Simpson, to uh, approve this destruction of evidence and from line item 10, 569, 330, not to exceed $999.99. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer. Uh, approved ch uh, plan changes nationwide deferred compensation plan. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. I had asked that this item be pulled at this time. That's right. Carlton and I had discussed it, but he has a few more questions that we're going to resolve before we bring it back. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Table, table is? Motion table. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson. Motion made by Commissioner Berry. Is there any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Okay, you want to go ahead with the next one? Yes, sir. Um, this is about United Way coming in during open enrollment. Um, the judge and I met last week, not last week, two weeks ago, and discussed this. Last year, if you all will recall, um, I brought the United Way item before the court and was told by the court that I needed to get with Bob and bring this back before the court before open enrollment of next year. After I spoke to the judge, and I went and talked to Bob. Bob did not indicate a problem. That was on Monday the 20th. And he, he said there was no problem doing this and they could come in at the same time that the insurance companies do. So I'm asking for your approval for them to do that. Just set up the same like set up in the back when we have the employee times. Is that what you're asking for? Yes. Motion approved. Motion made by Commissioner Barry. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson to approve uh, allowing United Way to attend open enrollment insurance meetings and uh, present opportunity for county employees to enroll in United Way program through payroll deduction. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the approval for two new computers uh, 
and one computer to monitor in a DPS office. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, John. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> Talking to some of y'all earlier over the past couple of weeks, um, one of the computers in our office that the secretaries use has crashed and IT was unable to revive it. Um, getting bids to, through purchasing and IT to replace both the, the PCs in the office that are approximately seven years old and then also one monitor that is going out will be a total of $1,382.91 and asking that we can replace both of them at the same time and then one additional monitor to replace the monitor that's going out. Your total is 13 what? 1382 and 91 cents. That's for two PCs and one monitor. It'll be fund 55. Is that correct, Judge? Yes. 55. Motion to approve two monitors or two computers and a monitor, 1382.91, fund 55. Second. I have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington to allow DPS to purchase two new uh, computers and one new monitor for the amount of $1,382.91. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the purchase of uniforms where the expend uh, exceeds one twelfth for maintenance. Uh, is Tim going to handle this, or are you? Tim had to leave. He had a doctor's appointment. Um, they have requested uniforms in the amount of. $400 or so out of their account. Their account balance is $500. They've not used any of it all year long. So he's just replenishing his uniforms for all his staff. It is over the 112. So we'd like permission to. Uh, just a point of order. How come this is an item on the agenda and the others you brought forward? I didn't do this one. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I just make sure there wasn't an issue or something. No. 9960 to be exact. Wow, that's pretty close to the 500, isn't it? All right, we have a motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Simpson, to allow the maintenance department to purchase uniforms, which exceeds one twelfth of their uh, budget in the amount of $499.60. Uh, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Nelda. Consider and take appropriate action to authorize IT to turn up the wide area network uh, service to Annex 2 Library Animal Control. Does that not include the courthouse? The courthouse has it on, its own fiber optic line there, Judge. Right. We were able to salvage that one. Um, Judge Commissioners, this is the, the final uh, connections to complete the uh, connectivity uh, setup that we had with Charter Communications. Uh, including the library annex to and animal control. We have already tested all of these links to verify that they are functioning and functioning properly. Um, this would complete this phase of this project. Um, I'm very, number one, I'm very thankful to the Corps allowing us to, to move this direction. This is allowing us to, to really bring our network up to speed as far as our connectivity to our remote offices. So uh, I'd like to uh, propose that we go ahead and, and bring this. I'd recommend this. The library is 728 a month. Annex 2 is 728 a month, and animal control is 491 a month. Um, if we uh, turn these up, one of the future projects we want to bring up is going ahead and connecting uh, road operations so that we can do some things there. But that establishes our connectivity to that end of, uh, of the county equipment. So uh, we're just I'm really excited about this. This has been a good project. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Let me ask one question. This doesn't have everything to do with this, and we can get back to this. But do we need to, you know, I know we've had a lot of problems this week with Spillman and some other systems. Is this uh, primarily software, or is, is it hardware, or a combination? What it Are we talking about the Spillman side? Well, a lot of that had to do with a Spillman update that, that was performed last week, Judge. And so anytime we have updates with a software package like that, 
oftentimes right after that update, you'll find some surprises, you know, here and there, things that were working before that are not working exactly the same way. And usually we have a couple of days that, that we have to iron things out with Spillman or NetData or pretty much any of our software vendors. Well, I know that, I know as software improves and new, new features come out, sometimes it stress, stresses our old equipment. And that's what I was referring to. Right, now fortunately on, from, our, from a, a hardware side, um, our, our hardware for the Spillman operations is in pretty good shape. We do have some things that we need to look at here in the next, in the next year, but we are very blessed we're in good shape as far as hardware goes uh, for the most part there. Okay, thank you very uh, much. It ensures our connectivity and helps us with our connectivity to get to Spillman and to any of our other locations that use net data, telephones, anything. Did you say it's 788, 788, and 491? 728, 728, and 491. There is no connection fee. What are we paying now? Well, we've been using the old fiber that we've had in place for 18 years, Commissioner, and that just that fiber was just going away on us. We're just having more and more and more problems, which is the reason that we started this. So to answer your question, at this point, we had not really been paying anything for connectivity to those other than maybe what had been paid initially to install that f old fiber. These are just, this is just fiber update. This is just a fiber optic update. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve this uh, uh, fiber update, fiber uh, for the IT system, uh, for the Annex 2 library and animal control. Motion made Second. by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner Barry. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the service agreement uh, from George Ferris of Barber uh, for the kiosk. Uh, yes, sir. Morning, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, uh, this is a, a wayfinding directional sign program that we've implemented in 11 other cities. Uh, uh, we're uh, initially uh, working with Granbury, the uh, city of Granbury, and then uh, through consultation with them and discussions, I uh, felt like it'd be appropriate to involve the county with the installation of four kiosk type signs, specifically the one that's mentioned in appendix A number one. Uh, one of those on the four corners of the courthouse square, uh, zero cost to the county, as well as zero cost to the city, uh, point of fact. the. Uh, the, the kiosk would be used to do two, two things, to provide at no cost 20% of the panels to the county for use for wayfinding to county facilities, and then the, the remaining panels would be leased uh, to uh, historic businesses around the square for wayfinding, uh, and then the county would participate in a part of that revenue. It's not a, it's not a lot of money, uh, Judge, but uh, anyway, they would participate in part of that, you know, per the proposed contract. So. Um, that's the background on this, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions. And You'll install them and everything, is that correct? That's correct. Install and maintain them. We self-perform all of our work. We've been in business for 30 years. The, uh, I have the agreement here. There's some changes that we need to make on that. I've talked to Kelton, gave them to me this morning, and some of this, it it's talks about county ordinances. We don't have ordinances, and it talks about uh, the city, the city council in here, and, and that should be the commissioner's court. And it also talks about uh, having the city of Granbury logo. I believe it, around the courthouse, it would be. I believe the commissioners would like it better if it said the Hood County logo on it. We're, we're very content to uh, work that out. Let the okay. let the county and the city uh, okay. uh, work that out. So uh, we we'd serve at your pleasure there. And as far as the the nomenclature on the contract, it was, this was what we did is we took the city contract and would adapt it to the county or whatever changes as far as um, that type of uh, technical data. We're very content to let your county attorney rework that. And I know it's Wayne and Sean is in the audience, so I'm sure all the signs meet the city's sign ordinances and specs, correct? 
Uh, yes, sir, to the best of my knowledge, we've spent a uh, better part of a year working with uh, city manager and their development director, Mr. Sopchak, and uh, uh, we're, I believe we're ready to go. We have, it's set for uh, city council uh, consideration September 4th at 6 p.m., so we've been at this for a little bit. We also had to get approval from the state because of uh, the two state highways, 377 and 51. Text dot. Text dot. We've got approval from them for, to do it. Motion to approve and let the judge sign the answer. Second. Second. I think. Huh? All right. Motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Simpson, uh, to uh, to to approve the service agreement from George Ferris of Barber Clear uh, View Kiosk concerning the location of uh, signs around the square. Any further discussion? Pending, pending changes. Pending changes of the contract, okay. yes. Okay, any, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. All right, consider and take appropriate action uh, uh, to authorize county judge to approve uh, the a cooperative agreement between the Office of the Attorney General, State of Texas, and Hood County. Uh, District Clerk. Just a renewal contract. Motion approved. Second. And a motion made by Commissioner Barry and seconded by Commissioner Heather. <coughs> to that, did, does Kelton need to see that or anything? Okay. Then uh, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Right, opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action regarding uh, the request from Martha Pyron uh, for the Kiwanis Club, Club to place gumball machines in the county buildings. Yes, ma'am. Judge, commissioners. Uh, in the past, the Kiwanis Club has had a number of gumball machines in the county offices. Uh, they were removed during all of the transitional work and, and remodeling, what have you. This is one of the fundraisers for the Kiwanis Club. It does not cost the uh, county in any way. Uh, no maintenance that will be done entirely um, by the organization that places those. And um, we just appreciate your support in letting us put those in whichever offices you specify, of course. Um, and it can be, it doesn't have to be gum, we call it gumball machines, but if some of the offices would prefer to have a type of candy instead, uh, that could be arranged. Well, every courthouse that I've ever been in has had a gumball machine, so I, you know, I, I think that I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the location of gumball machines or whatever that that department wants. Or, I'll uh, second that. All right, have a motion made by uh, Cockrum, seconded, that's funny to say that, uh, by, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington. Uh, any further discussion? Well, they just, your, your, your organization doesn't do it. You have somebody that comes in and does it. That's correct. So make a point of contact just to work through the judge's office then in your motion. That way, if there are certain areas people want them or don't want them, they can work that way out. You okay. Charles' logo on it though, right? Your little yes. sticker. Okay, yes. yes. All right. So uh, the motion now is to allow them to place them in certain offices with the working through the uh, county judge's office because some departments may not want them. Okay. Aye. Any further discussion on that? And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Thank you. Consider and take appropriate action re uh, regarding uh, changes to the sick pool policy. Judge Commissioners, um, with the assistance of Mary Gertis in my department and, and uh, Kathy Davis, our treasurer, uh, the language has worked out. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is uh, allow the employees to get an additional eight hours of sick leave uh, each January. If they choose to donate that, then they will be allowed to get into the sick pool. If they choose to keep the hours, uh, which they can do, and they won't be allowed to use the sick pool at all. Uh, employees must be with the county for at least 12 months per our, per our regular full-time employee definitions. 
And the other thing is that, the, that in the event of a question arises whether or not an employee's condition would qualify for the sick pool withdrawal, uh, the pool administrator, which is Kathy Davis and myself, may request an independent physician's opinion before making that determination. But at that, that's basically what has changed in the sick leave policy. It's a little cleanup uh, and uh, a little extra way to get people into the sick pool. But I ask for your approval on this. Okay, do I have a motion or, uh, to approve? This is a good deal because what's happened in the past and what's been brought to our attention was a lot of people burn their sick time every day and don't keep it. So be giving them eight hours more is what the court's basically doing is what the treasurer and the HR's worked out is we're giving them eight hours more sick time. So everyone will have skin in the game to get into the sick pool. But that way if they had a catastrophic illness, that's when, uh, you know, you have to get in at the first of the year. Is it first of the year or is it October 1st? It's not first of the year. Okay. So that's why instead of someone new losing eight hours out of 40 hours they may have earned, they've got to notify however HR and treasurer works that out to be in the sick pool so that they have skin in the game as well. And that way they're not burning up sick time that other people have donated because that has been one of the complaints in catastrophic illnesses is, well, this person would have sick time if they hadn't used it throughout the whole t time. So it, it was worked out and it was a great deal to work it out. So I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Simpson to uh, approve. Is there any further comment? Thank you, gentlemen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The only, the only one thing that I want to, if, if you could uh, just put the changes, not only in red, but italics, because when people copy them, they, Absolutely. yeah, they, they don't know. Thank you very much. All right, it is now uh, four minutes until 10, and we are adjourned. Thank you all very much.